to watch. He is armed himself shots. Shot, watch it, tear gas. Light rounds. Also, I can see that. But I want to since, since my cousin there is no you come on the East Coast. You listen to me. Right? No, you come on the East Coast. You listen to me now. You gotta listen to me too, man. I am listening to right? you. No, you, 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 I see your East Coast. The day when they get a protest of them, the next day that's when you see one one bigger heads come up for talk to my family. Right? And that's bad. If you didn't do in a protest, you want to see nobody for justice. I'm not I'm not holding back nothing. I'm not holding back nothing. I just need justice of my family. Push one tough and intention is for a better life in the region for we woman and we children. That must be the ambition of the Caribbean and the Caribbean and the Caribbean. When we speak of civil liberties and civil rights, people are beginning to understand that the most fundamental of these is the right to work in our society. And what is occurring in Guyana is that the government is making political capital out of the indefensible position of one who is either unemployed or is very close to the line of being unemployed. I want to say to you all in no uncertain terms, that this government is disrespectful to black people. And if people disrespect you, you have a right to disrespect them. I am saying now that we have started, now that we have come together, do not sleep. Don't let us go back quietly into the night. But this must be the order of the day. Good evening and welcome to Politics 101. Let us, not go, let us not go back to sleep into the night. Protests must be order of the day. And I want to welcome all of you, all of you who are joining us this evening, uh, because this evening we're going to be talking about work and we're going to be talking about labor. And we're going to be talking about Guyana. We're going to talk, be talking about our Guyana. And you see the the banner on the screen, GTUC to submit 15 point plan for economic and political justice to government. Lincoln Lewis, this is a 15 point plan unveiled by Lincoln Lewis on behalf of the GTUC on Labor Day, May 1. And we're gonna be talking about that tonight. But I want, I want you all to pay close attention to this clip. I played it just now. I'm going to play it again. 
Walter Rodney speaking in the black in the background in the 1970s. I want you all to pay attention to what Walter Rodney is saying in this clip because it is relevant to what we are going to be talking about tonight. <laughs> And when we speak of civil liberties and civil rights, people are beginning to understand that the most fundamental of these is the right to work in our society. And what is occurring in Guyana is that the government is making political capital out of the indefensible position of one who is either unemployed or is very close to the line of being unemployed. I want to say to you all in no uncertain terms, that this government is disrespectful to black people. You heard Rodney there. The government is making political capital out of the indefensible position of people who are unemployed or underemployed. He wasn't talking about the Guyana in which there was a lot of oil money. This is 90. 1977, Rodney is talking about this. 77, 6, 83, and 40, 46 years ago. A lot of people say, oh, if Walter Rodney were alive today and he's turning in his grave and to see what his WPA people are doing and so on. And Walter Rodney talks about a government who's taking advantage of the indefensible position of one who is either unemployed or close to being unemployed. And when we speak of civil liberties and civil rights, people are beginning to understand that the most fundamental of these is the right to work in our society. And what is occurring in Guyana is that the government is making political capital out of the indefensible position of one who is either unemployed or is very close to the line of being unemployed. I want to speak to you all. 1977. This is 2023. You didn't have to be born. Sorry, you have to be alive in 1977. You're alive today. And you see what the government is doing, going around and taking advantage of black people's unemployment or the fact that they are close to being unemployed, throwing things at them, buying them, raiding African Guyanese community like the old slave masters used to raid our communities in Africa. They don't like me. When I call the lady slave catcher, they made a whole heap of noise about it. But I was less concerned about the lady. I was more concerned about people not delivering themselves or their sisters and brothers to a government that is acting like a slave master. I was talking less about the lady and more about the slave master. People misinterpreted me. I thought I was getting at Sister Gita. Sister Gita is misguided, that's all. You know, she, she's chatting, as people do, and she doesn't have a contextual, historical context, and, but I was less concerned about Gita. I was more concerned about the slave master, not the slave catcher. I illuminated the slave catcher to get at the slave master. And what the PPP is doing going into black communities, that's called raiding the black community looking for slaves. Putting red jerseys on them as they used to do back then. Taking away their identity. That's what the red jersey is supposed to do. To take away your political identity and give you a new identity. In slavery, they call it seasoning. And the slave master would raid the slaves, hit their back, hit their chest, open them out. The slave master, they are doing that. Put you in the public, put a mic in front of you. 
and get you to chat nonsense. That's why Ravidev called me a history, or, 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 or what he called me, a memory warrior. Yes, this is a war that has been declared on black people. And I want to use the memory of slavery, the memory of that history to say to black people, this is reminiscent of slavery. So here are black people unemployed. Instead of coming up with a plan to get them employed in a structural way so they can feed their families, you go around raiding their communities and giving them trinkets. I, I, I'm not going to stop, you know. Tell you all. And over the last week, I've been making a lot of noise about regime change. Because a lot is happening that stems from regime change. The attempt to take over the press association. The beating up on the very press that helped to bring you to power. The attempt to show down the courts when you use the conservatism of the court to bring you to power. Now you beat it up on the court. You appealing against your own court on behalf of big capital because big capital had to bring you to power. People are running around. Oh, how did PPP could, could, could appeal their own? Listen, is regime change stupid? They got to pay back. You all were collateral damage. The PPP has to make a choice and is making a choice between those local forces who help to bring them to power and those local forces, sorry, those foreign forces who ultimately brought them to power. When the push come to shove, it is taking the side of those who ultimately brought them to power. So my brother Glenn Lal, who kicked Lincoln Lewis and me out because we didn't go along with regime change, now, the PP has to make a choice between him and Big Uncle. And they're choosing Big Uncle then. I love the fact that Glenn is walking. He should have been walking in the five months. Beating up on labor. Going around and giving people forty thousand dollars instead of giving them real work, refusing to meet with the unions to talk about wages. I belong to a political party that says a five-man party and is intellectual. We plead guilty. We are a five-man party. Are we going to show Jack the only PPP what a five-man party can do? And this five-man party is saying, you're not going to get away with behaving as though you're a normal political party. You are not. You are a regime that was installed. And installed regimes behave in a certain way. And the way you are behaving is how they are behaving. That's how you install regime. And if nobody wants to say the five-man party will say it. It's no accident that you are appealing a case of your own court. Why? Because you'd never expected your court to rule beyond the conservative way it is normally ruled. When it rules conservatively, conservatively, it benefits you. What 
conservative means is to conserve, my brother and sisters, conserve the status quo. What Justice Kisun did was to move beyond conserving the status quo. The meaning of that ruling is that regardless of what the situation is, regardless of what arrangements you made with the government, if you come into a country, you obey the laws of the country. That's what that ruling means. And once the court move out and get into that space, they start to attack the court. Oh, the court is going into murky waters, threatening the court. Hollering pan journalists, threatening journalists. Hollering pan the opposition PNC, threatening the PNC. Hollering on black people, threatening black people. Hollering on the trade unions. That's how an install regime behave. Never again should we fall for that nonsense that we fell for in 2020. Ultimately, the big countries are looking after their interests. Who is looking after our interests? When the media attempts to do so, they haul on the media. When the court attempts to do so, they all are in on the court. You all know what the court did again today? And all of you all will remember. When everybody was saying rocks and George were on the PPP side, you all remember I was saying, do not attack your courts. Attack the rulings. If you don't like them, do not attack your court because we will need that very court one day. And you know what the court did today? It tell Soko and the government, go to hell and let Winston Jordan go because you all have brought political trumped-up charge against him. That's what the court did today. That's why I'm telling you all in the last three years, don't attack Roxon George. Don't attack your courts. Disagree with their rulings. God works in mysterious ways. That very court whose rulings help to install the regime, that very court is going to be pivotal to bring in down that regime. The regime is lawless. The court is there to uphold the law. Sometimes I know we get too impatient. Boots on the ground, boots on the ground, boots on the ground. You don't boots on the ground with regime change. Last night I went to run a her an errand in a store. And the lady who checked me out was in Iraq. She's from Iraq, Iraqian. She asked me where you're from. I tell you where you're from. She, I asked her where she's from. She said, Iraq. She said, you know about Iraq? I said, yes. She said, oh, you know about Iraq? I said, well, I'm a teacher, you know. I'm a professor. She said, oh, my goodness. She said, I'm a lawyer. She's checking out at the store. She said, as a result of regime change, this is a, this lady telling me, I had to flee my country. And here I am as a refugee. But I'm checking out at a store. And I was a lawyer in my country before regime change. I agreed with the regime change because I didn't like Saddam. And I allowed them to change the regime in Iraq. And look what I'm doing tonight, sir. What regime change does is that it paralyzes your institutions. And what we have to do is to revive our institutions and then put boots on the ground. 
Lincoln Lewis. Lincoln Lewis. Good night. Good night. Good night, viewers. Good night, brothers and sisters, friends and well wishers. Good night. What do you think of the Winston Jordan ruling today? Are you hearing me, Lincoln? Lincoln, are you hearing me? Lincoln, are you hearing me? I hear you now, David. All right. What do you think All about right. the Winston Jordan ruling? What do you ruling? think about the Winston Jordan ruling? We get it. Um, I never we had get any other opinion than the one that Jordan would have been exonerated. I believe that all those cases that they took here, Jordan, Colvin London, Trevor Ben, those cases are going to go to the winds. All that they intend to do was to lock up the people. Mr. Jadio said it before they get into power, that they are going to lock up people. And they did just what they said they're going to do. So it's not, they don't have to have evidence. It's an abuse of privilege to be in office, to pull the levers of power. It's a clear abuse. And that's what they are comfortable doing, you know? Lincoln, the way Lincoln, beyond, 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 beyond that, that, what is what the is lesson the for us in that? Well, I'll tell you what. There's a, what we need to understand that the system is against us. But I'll tell you beyond that what I've seen. We seem to have lost Mr. Lewis there. We seem to have lost Mr. Lewis there. You know, here we are in a large country, the, the, the fastest growing economy, but we can't get internet right. We cannot get basic internet right. Uh, but the point we are making here, Mr. Lewis, are you with us? Are you with us, Mr. Lewis? He's with us, but uh, he's with us, but we're not hearing him. And that is what we're talking about. That is what we're talking about. So the court, the court, are so you, the court, are you, yes, the Lewis. court, are you, are you? I was hearing us? you. Are you? Go, ahead, go, ahead. go ahead. Talk with us. Um, let, go ahead, go ahead. What I'm saying go ahead. is that. As a people, we need to be vigilant. We need to mobilize against any, any system that sets out to deprive us of our rights, to transgress those rights, to violate laws in the, in, in, in the, in the process. We need, to, we need to learn that these are the type of things. Let me tell you what. They, they, what do you call it? The resistance that was shown in, in 2020, post balloting, that resistance has been informed by a group of people who know that when the PDP, all the levers of power, regardless of what constitution and laws we have in place to protect us, they are going to transgress our rights, they're going to violate laws, they are going to discriminate against us. These are type of things that people are conscious of. And because we're conscious of those type of things, that's why you see that resistance. And the people have a right to resist any group or any system that militates against their own interests. So tell me, nobody should come to tell me that when you have one man, one vote, it transforms, it transforms to equal rights and justice in society. We have seen it over the years. It started in 1992, where I can remember, vividly many of us should remember. It started in 1992, where a number of, of persons, where a number of persons decided that they are going to 
that they are going to terminate a number of public servants, even those who were career public ser servants, take them out of the system because we know in power. We have seen a repeat of it. In 2020, what more do we have to look for? Many of us are so selfish, we are greedy, that we are prepared to accept anything from these guys. There are some who they are put into a position. You know, like I've seen a, a photograph where a staunch, a person who has benefited over the years under the PNC is standing up, supervising some other women who are in the gutter, cleaning to get a bread for the children and if possible a meal for themselves. Conscious of these type of things, we need to definitely understand that that is reminiscent of the what the slave master has done to us over the years. They now, become, they now become the agents of the of the way you of, of, of the slave master. They're standing up over you. Like they get a whip, you know, ready to whip you. Yes. You must work. You must yes. be mean. It's so demeaning. These are type of things that we that that when you see them, you understand. And let me tell you further. Let me make this point. I've always been saying that the PPP believe that they must be the people who select who the leaders. Or, or who's supposed to lead the people in the, in the African community. They always believe in that. Even if you remember, a number of NDCs, they put IMC. They put IMC because they are saying the election. But we will say, oh, 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 oh. these are things that are glaring in front of us. But they have forced people into such a position to, to the point where they become now, they are branding you. They give you a, 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 a t shirt and they put PDBC. They're not branding you. You, you must identify yourself away from the pack. These are the type of things that are happening, and we need to talk about them. They, 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 it's a reflection of the thinking of the men and women who are in the PDP, who, time, who decided yeah, that Lincoln, what they're going to do Lincoln. is time for much done. The African community. Yeah. Lincoln. Well, I ain't taking much. Lincoln. That is his story. Lincoln, are you hearing me? Yes, baby. You're hearing me? Are you hearing me, Lincoln? Lincoln, are you hearing me? Apparently, Lincoln Lewis is not hearing me. The internet seems to be very bad tonight. Me, brother Lincoln is the internet is bad and he is not hearing me. The internet is bad. Um, and I started out tonight with that clip from Walter Rodney in which he talks about the government taking advantage of the indefensible position of those who are unemployed or close to being on it. Okay. I, I, want to comment. I want to comment. I want to comment. I want to comment on that clip that Walter Rodney from Walter Rodney speaking about the right to work and the way government I'm was, you, he was talking about forty six years ago. Okay, comment on that Rodney clip. Is 
a lot of delay it's bad it's bad it's bad lincoln's connection lincoln connection is bad um and, and we were talking about the rodney clip from 46 years ago 46 years ago where rodney saying a government taking advantage the right to work the right to work is a human right and no government should take advantage of people being unemployed or underemployed and to use it for political capital. You are taking people's unemployment, underemployment, and using it as a means of coercing them to join your party. No, if, if a government provides jobs for people, if you have a job plan, an, an employment plan, and Black people, brown people, Chinese people, Portuguese people, Amerindian people, black people, Indian people get employment as a result of that job plan. And the government says, we provided a plan that gave employment to Guyanese. Give us another term. That is legitimate. But when you know people are unemployed, you do not come up with an employment plan, but you go to their communities, go look for them, give them a $40,000 or a $10,000, and use jersey on them, and force them to join your party. That is not development. That is taking advantage of people on employment status and it ought not to be tolerated that is slave raiding that is slave raiding i am dubbing it that slave raiding going into black communities raiding the unemployed like slaves bringing them on the road, parading them with red jerseys, getting them to open their mouth and talk a certain nonsense. That is slave raiding. And I'm calling it for what it is. And if you're going to raid me as a slave, then first of all, the elders of the community, they have to stand up and say, no slave raiding in my community. and push back against it. The PPP has locked the Indian community. You think Dartle could go into an Indian community and raid, state, raid, raid Indian people? No matter how the PNC talk about how things are bad with Indian people, I'm saying at this point, they cannot go into an Indian community and raid them and put on green jersey on them. The Indian leaders and community leaders would not allow them to do it. And they should not do it. But Indian leaders are coming into our communities and our leaders are standing by and complaining. You don't complain when people are coming in to your home and raiding your people like slave masters. You do something about it. You stop them from doing it. We have to take our politics there. This is an I pass to black people. As I said, if the government comes up with a plan, as Lincoln Lewis came up with a 15-point plan, and the, the, the internet is back tonight, so I can't get them to talk about it. If they come up with an employment plan that provides employment, for all Guyanese, including Africans. And then you go to an election 
and you ask the people, you say, look with what we have done. Give me your vote. That is legitimate. That is legitimate. But you don't go into people's community and raid them like slaves. And I'm saying it is wrong. The court today ruled that Winston Jordan is innocent. Accused Soku of political, bringing political charges in the court. And the magistrate kick it out as it should be. That's what our courts need to do. The courts are not a place to take political charges. The court needs to do the same with all the other charges that are before them. You cannot be using our courts for a political purpose, partisan political nonsense, but what? They felt that what happened in 2020, in those five months, they felt that they got the court where they want it. As I repeatedly said, in 2020, the court ruled conservatively. And when a court is confronted with a very dynamic situation and it rules in an undynamic way, that dynamism takes the day. The court had not caught up with what was happening, as many of us didn't know what was happening in 2020. We didn't know it was regime change. If you notice, it's only a few of us. Only few of us. David Hines and the five-man party talk about regime change. Nobody is looking to the regime change for the answers. That's where the answers are. Yes, the PPP, they're... They, they want domination. The PPP, they are gangsters. But gangsters don't operate with free will in a normal society. The gangsters are operating with a free will because of the cover that they have, they have gotten from regime change. And until we are able to unravel the re regime change, we are not going to tame the gangsters. The cover from regime change. The Americans and Exxon are not going to remove that cover because they are benefiting from that cover. They're going to send some signals as they have been doing in the three years, but they're not going to remove those covers. Our courts have to stand up. And remove the cover of regime change that is keeping them down. Our courts have to start doing that. They have to come out from under the spell of regime change. Our media have to come out from under the spell of regime change. Our opposition parties have to come out from the chokehold of regime change. Yes, the regime change have put a chokehold on our courts, our media, our civil society, our opposition parties, our churches. Thank God the courts are beginning to free themselves from that chokehold of regime change. Thank God the media The media house owners, not the reporters, the media house owners 
are the ones who took the media into the regime change. Media owners have interests and they thought their interests would have been served by removing the Granger regime and installing the PNC, the PPP regime. The media owners, not the reporters, is the media owners who took the media into regime change. The regime promised some with the owners that we are going to renew the contract. And when the media owners went along with them, went along with the regime change, when they are in power, they turn to the media owners and tell them, no, we're not renewing the contract. Some of the media owners now start to pong. But who they ponged in? They ponged in Exxon. I'm not saying Egdon should not be pounded in, but Exxon is, are the beneficiaries of regime change. Don't pong Exxon. Use the little might you have to pong the PPP. There's me problem with, 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 with Glenn and Daggers and the rest of them, you know. There's me problem with them. My problem is not the cause. Don't hammer Exxon now, hammer the PPP. And when you hammer the PPP, and you're able to, to, to hold them down, then you turn to Exxon. They're hammering Exxon. Hammer your government. How are you government? Exxon are the beneficiaries and Exxon pay. Exxon are not, ben Exxon not benefiting from the oil for nothing. I am sure Exxon pay the price. They pay off. The PPP got paid. What the, what the PPP got? Power. That's what Exxon helped them to get power. And you think Exxon is going to help a government to get into power? And then don't expect that government to deliver? So the media get put in a chokehold. And now they believe that they can walk into the press association, put their man there, and the man gonna take over the press association and bring it to the PPP. Thank God for that woman. I stayed out at the press election. And that is not political people business. So I said nothing on that election. But I can say it now. Thank God that young lady won. Thank God that young lady won. And thank God for the journalists who, who voted for that young lady. If that young lady had not won, the press association would have been in the control of the PPP, total control. Are you all know about boots in the ground? You want, you, want, you want to tell you all tonight about boots on the ground? Those 75 journalists who voted for that young lady, those were 75 boots on the ground. I, I, I tell you all on this program, I don't mind boots on the ground, but I think you all just get carried away. Those 75 people, those 75 journalists who voted for Nazima Ragbir, there are boots on the ground. And Nazima is a shining star. I don't want Nazima to, to support PNC or support WPA 
or support anybody. She should not support anybody. She should support the right of the media. She's a shining star. And those 75 are boots on the ground. And the 25, they are slave catters. The 25 who vote for the other man. And then that, that chap, I love Neil Marx. But Neil can come and tell Guyanese people that the voters list was padded. Neil, that come out from your mouth. Neil, your bosses have a padded national voters list by 200,000. Neil, you accusing Svetlana Abrams of padding voters list. And the government you support came to power thanks to a voters list, a padded voters list. Oh my God. Neil Marx know about padded voters list. Neil Marx complaining about padded voters list. Neil Marx support the government. I remember him reporting during the five months. Neil Marx, the PPP came to power. They were installed in power thanks to a padded voters list 200,000 times. Leave the goddamn press association alone, Neil. You allow yourself to be used to undermine your profession. And I say here tonight, and they can carry my name again, the 25 people who voted for you, Neil, they're slave catchers. And those who catch slaves, those who catch slaves, they take them to the slave master. Yes, they abuse me and tell me I was called Gita Chandan a slave catcher. I had to call Gita a slave catcher to focus on the slave master. And let me say, there were no more slave catchers after Gita. They tried to say that... Um, Ganesh and Ubraj and, and Daniel C. Ram and others that I call them slave catchers. No, I didn't call them slave catchers. They didn't criticize Ogunse. They criticized Rondo. And my criticism of them was that they could have dealt with that issue of the public square. Which they eventually did. And Rhonda, who is on here tonight, and Kanish, the leader of that group, they were able to meet and to mend fences, I think, to a certain level. And that's my point. So I never call Ganesh and them slave catchers. They weren't. But Gita ventured there. And my point was twofold. First of all, that no other one must follow Gita. No other one must follow Gita. And second, I wanted to point to the slave master. And that is what I mean, that elders must defend our community. I felt that if Gita was coming to deliver Takuma Ogunse, to the slave master, I had to make sure that no other catchers came after Gita. I had to make Gita an example. And no other slave catchers came. I'm sorry, Gita, that you, you think, but whoever advised you to go there, they didn't know they had to come up against David Hines. And I don't play. I don't play. The first slave catcher come, 
I put you in the public so that no other slave catchers will come. And the slave master, the slave master, Barajadio sat down on the press conference. And then David Haynes, Gita Chandan, and the others criticized Ogunse, and he called them slave catchers. And Aubrey Norton didn't defend them. I'm glad I get the attention because it's he, the slave master, I wanted to get at. So I get the slave master to get the message don't send more raiders. Sisters and brothers, no other slave catchers came. And that is what I mean that we in the black community have to stop the raiders. I'm not talking about physically. Me is not a strong man. I may have a strong voice. I may have a little bit of common sense. That thank God I get it from the community that produced me. And I'm going to use that to defend the community. I know nobody wants to be called a slave catcher in 2020. I know that. But if you don't want to be called a slave catcher, don't catch slaves. David Lines is very clear. You're not going to come into the WPA's community and catch slaves. You attempt to catch Ogunsi. I'm going to call you out and I'm going to fight. I'm going to identify who is buying the slave you're catching. The slave master. And I'm going to make sure no other slave catcher come to you. I publicly apologize to Sister Gita, not for my comment. But because you put yourself in the firing line. Don't do it again, Gita. Certain ma matter keep out. Stay away from. Especially if you got to deal with a man like me. I ain't worrying about crossover vote, you know, that can't catch me with her. David Hines won crossover vote, so you shouldn't say what he's saying. No! Good night, Dennis Atwell. God bless you. Good night, Tony Short. Good night, Carol Jacobs. Good night, Onika Melville. I will want you all votes when it's time for that. <laughs> don't, 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 don't get it tied up. The vote, the vote, when it's vote, when the list clean. When the list clean. And when we get clean elections, I'm going to want you all votes. But for now, I ain't ready for that. What I want is your minds and your hearts to stand up in defense against the slave raiders. That's what I'm talking about. Brother Lincoln gonna come on tomorrow night or, or, or the other night. His internet was bad tonight and we don't want to oppress you all. But I, I, I got this in my mind a long time to talk about. Boots on the ground. We had 75 of them at Theater Gill on Sunday. And we had 25 slave catchers there. Regime change. Our courts, thank God Almighty. Recognize what they were using the Winston Jordan charge to do. To kill that brother. brother arrest that brother wrongfully I've been locked up before so I know what it does that brother's mother sick lady had to see her son in shackles 
thank God the court said, politically motivated, and kicked the case out. Using the police, using the court, using the media. Brother Glenn Lal, Brother Daggers, I'm glad for that march. I did it once in 19... 85, the WPA did what was called the long walk. We marched from the other direction. We marched from Charity to Crabwood Creek. And then we went up to Linden. So I know it wasn't long, and I was on the entire march. He used to see Kwayana in 1985. He was 60 years old. He walked the entire walk. They didn't give us permission, so we had to walk five at a time. And Kwayano for the entire march was one, and they were always four with him. But the rest of us were along with the march with them. Um, thing we stopped at communities and we held what was called whistle stop meetings. So I like the fact that they did a long walk, but then you all got to stop attacking Exxon. You got to attack the government. And you all have to admit, at least to yourself, that you all were wrong in 2020. The 2020 election was not about ballots. It was not about democratic change. The election was the occasion for a regime change. The 2020 narrative was about regime change. If you didn't know it then, three years later, you ought to know that is what happened. And backpedal. Jamaicans said, we will not come again. You recognize now is regime change. Repent. PPP is not back in Exxon because they think Exxon is right. The PPP is back in Exxon because it invest. Exxon invest in the PPP. Exxon don't care, you know. If tomorrow the table turn, they will invest in the PNC. <laughs> they don't care. Uh, okay. They invest in the PPP. And the PPP has to deliver. And what we have to do is to let Guyanese know what the PPP is doing. And we have to let Exxon know that supporting the PPP is in your interest. But in trying to achieve your interests, you are messing up the lives of half of the population. And we are saying to Exxon, we rather you deal not with the PPP or the PNC. We will prefer you to deal with us as a country. And so therefore we want a government that represents the country. And the PPP is not representing the country. And if the PNC gets into office tomorrow, it will not represent the country. We need a government of all forces to represent all of the people in the country, Mr. Exxon. We are stupid, we're stupid in 2023 to chase Exxon way. Burnham used to say, if you kill me, one Rasta, another Rasta, another Rasta gonna take my place. If we chase out Exxon, another Exxon gonna take Exxon place. So it's not about chasing out Exxon. It's about first of all having a national government that respects the people of Guyana to arise at an amicable 
contract with Exxon. Yes, the, 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 the contract that the, that the coalition signed was terrible. And the PPP is continuing the terrible contract. Only a government that represents all of the people of Guyana can get a reasonable contract. And that's what we have to struggle for. WPI is saying, let us fight to bring back sanity to our country. Let us fight to remove the shackles from the feet of black people. That is our fight today, tomorrow, and the next day, and the next day. And at the end of our fight, what are we looking for? We are looking for a regime that is not installed, but a regime that comes out of the votes of all of the people. If you all give WPA 10% of the vote, we must be at the table to represent your you 10 percenters. That's what we're talking about. We must not be on, on the outside as opposition. Why the hell you want to be an opposition when you get billions of dollars at the table and you outside opposition to billions of dollars? I want us to start thinking differently. Yeah, win the game. I'm in politics not just to oppose. I'm in politics, the WPA, we are in politics. However, five man we are. to be able to make decisions on those who think we are worthy. And so today, tomorrow, is our job is to remove the shackles. Those 75 voters on Sunday at Theater Gill have begun to remove the shackles from the media. God bless them. There were boots on the ground, boots of steel. The court has begun to free itself from the shackles of regime change. Don't bring political charges in front of me, said that magistrate. When you come in, come good. That's boots on the ground. I don't care what they say. I know 98 percent of the army and the soldiers voted for the APNU and the coalition, the APNUFC. So I know that 98 percent of the army supporting us. I know that because I know they voted for us. And I know they love us. And so when we say, brothers, you have the burden of defending Guyana's borders. You have the burden of protecting us while we sleep at night. You have the burden of protecting us against the wayward among us who would want to commit crimes against us. Do not take on another burden of shooting down your brothers and sisters. Do not take on that burden. We love you and we know that you love us because you come from us. You're black like me. You're poor like me and poverty is your legacy, Mr. Soldier, Mr. Police. 
I know when you hear me, you say, hear me by. Talk for me. And I want you all to continue to love us. Don't let no install regime make you turn your guns on me. Because you're black like me and you're poor like me and poverty is the legacy if we don't remove the shackles. So when you hear my voice, Mr. Soldier and Mr. Police, breathe a sigh of relief because you know here is one black man who is on your side. Because you're black like me and you're poor like me. And poverty is one of our legacies, but we have to turn the legacy of poverty into a legacy of freedom. We're moving on. Thank you, journalists, 75% of you. Thank you for standing up for the right of the press, the media, to be impartial. To be impartial. Thank you to the courts for not allowing Jagyo to wag his finger in your face and tell you that you are entering murky waters. Jagyo is a murky fellow. He is a murky fellow. Not you, Mr. Court, Mrs. Court. Thank you for standing up for justice and standing up for the independence of the court. Thank you, my people. Thank you all. You all are beautiful. You all are most beautiful. Down in Liverpool, wherever you are, there in French Guyana, I think, or in England, Desri Simmons, all of you who are the real soldiers, the real boots on the ground, who stand with us and stand with yourselves. Every ounce of energy. Know that we are fighting a fight. When you all see Sister Gita, give her a hug and whisper in her ears, never attempt to catch another slave. Because you have to come up against a black man Proud as the tree, the axe man cannot tumble. Don't do it again, Sister Gita. Do your job. You belong to the PNC. Know that the PNC's supporters are majority black people. And you have a responsibility to defend those black people, not to catch them and show them over to that murky fellow. You have a responsibility to defend Indian people too. Pick up your placards, you Ganesh, Daniel, Ubraj, and go and picket the PPP to make May 5th Indian Arrival Day. Don't worry about Ogunse and Ronda Lane. Ronda is on your side. Ogunse is on your side. Jack Dio and Ali are not on your side. They cannot even give you, your people, a day with a name. Brother Ganesh, Brother Ubraj, and I love Brother Ubraj. He's an upful brother. 
Brother Ganesh, I think, has a tremendous future in politics. I don't know Daniel as well as I know the other two. And I think there's a, a sister with them. You all go and your job in the PNC is where you all find uh, Ali and Jack Dio, where you all find a soft spot, hit them hard. Do not be afraid to tell them what they're doing to Indian people. Don't just say Indian people are suffering. Look at what out there making the name of Indian people undignified. Stand up for the honor of Indian people. Honor. I don't, I'm not saying don't criticize Rhonda. That's not what I'm saying here. I'm saying do not deliver Rhonda to the slave master. Do not be a catcher of runaway slaves. Because when that slave starts to run away, he's not a slave, he's a human being. Rhonda, I disagree with what you said. Don't take Rhonda and throw her over to that murky fella. That's where you all went wrong. And Gita went further. She taken Ogunse, who's already, they put shackles on his feet and saying, no, no Gita. And Gita, you know that I love you because you, you made a tremendous sacrifice against the wishes of your community and perhaps your family to stand in our ranks. And we should be forever grateful to you for that. And I want to end tonight because I've been, there's a brother that I know you all are up in arms against and I love that brother. I'm talking about brother James Bond. I first start with love and I love brother James. And I know brother James has been in the public and I've been listening to him and I know he's been saying things that have been getting you all mad and crazy. I want to say one thing to Brother James tonight, and he and I have an understanding. Because the brother that I love, I want to say to Brother James, Brother James, if black people get contracts from this government, as you've been saying, if black people get privilege from this government, black people get things from this government, as you have been saying, James, is they right? Is they right? They're supposed to get contracts. They're supposed to get benefits. James, you're right. But James, where you're wrong is that black people don't have to go down on their knees and be grateful for it. So when black folks call them slave, um, house slaves, they're not talking, calling them house slaves because they get contracts or because they get jobs or because they get this or they get that. That's not why they're calling them house slaves. They're calling them house slaves because they get the contracts and then they go down on their knees and they start to suck. That's why they're calling them house slaves. You don't have to be grateful for what is yours. You don't have to thank no government. You don't have to be grateful to no government. You don't have to put on a red jersey. You don't have to sell your soul. So James, you get part of the story right. The wealth of the government is black people well too. And black people have a right to get them, to get contracts. Let there be. 200 and a thousand contracts. Keep them coming, James. Tell the PPP. Give more contracts. But we are not going to go down on our knees and give thanks to you 
Mr. PPP. It's called the gratefulness factor. Why must we be grateful for what is constitutionally ours, James? And James, I know you are not like that. I know you're wondering why people are calling you and others our slaves. And the reason they're doing it is not because you all are trying to get in the action, because the action is part of our action too. But what they feel is that you don't have to go down on your knees and pray to them as gods. Brother James, I just want to clarify for you. Brother James, if you can use your avenues to get more contracts for black people, God bless you and we will embrace you. But what people seem to be hearing, Brother James, is that you're saying we ought to be grateful. No, James. Slaves are never grateful to slave masters. If slave masters eventually facilitate the freedom of the slave, the slave should not be grateful. You should not enslave me in the first place. I have not one damn thing to be grateful to you for. If you're giving me contracts today, you should, in the first place, be giving me as many contracts as you're giving the Indian and Portuguese brothers and sisters. So if you give me a couple contracts today, I am not grateful to you because you should have been giving me contracts from the beginning. My grandfather's back pay, Brother James. And I know they're going to tell you, your big brother, David, I talk about you tonight. But I'm, I talk about you, as you notice, I'm not attacking you because I think, we, I, I, I understand why people attack you, but I'm not into that. I'm not into that, Brother James. I see you. And I see you struggle to balance what you think are two forces. But in balancing, you must look for equilibrium. You mustn't look for it cancel or cancel. You must look for equilibrium, Brother James. Give me freedom, give me justice, but don't expect me to suck your for it. Give me justice, give me freedom, give me economic independence, give me jobs, give me houses, give me freedom. But in the first place, it belongs to me. So I am not going down on my knees and say thanks to you for it. I say thanks to Brother Kofi and Brother Akra. I say thanks to Damon. I say thanks to all those women and men who fought so that we today can demand what is ours. We are going to say thanks to them. We're going to go down on our knees and say thanks to them. We're not going to go down on our knees and say thanks to those who would like to lock us away and decide they're going to free two or three of us. No. Open those damn gates widely. If you don't open them, you're going to hear from people like me. Good night. Love you all. And James, we're going to talk by, but get that story right. Get the balance right, James. The balance you're struggling with. You get the story right on one side. Jobs and contracts to we. It belongs to we. It's the balancing. You, you, shouldn't, you shouldn't appear to be saying that we should be grateful for it. We are grateful to Almighty God. We are grateful to the ancestors. And we are grateful to our leaders.
who have stood up for us. The Lion of Judah shall break every chain and give us the victory again and again.